Turning Red's only been out for a short while, so there's no confirmation of a sequel in the works quite yet. The people behind the film have given their support of the idea, with Sandra Oh pitching her own ideas for a plot, with Rosalie Chung confirming she would be involved with any continuation of the story. With the possibility hanging in the air, fans have come up with their own speculations of what Turning Red 2 could possibly revolve around. I'm Kifinosi with Wicked Binge, and this is Turning Red Sequel Possibilities. The first possibility on our list is May surviving school. Seeing as Turning Red took place when May was in the 8th grade, right before her start to high school, it would make sense that next time we see her, she would be taking on another year just before Big Hurdle. Maybe her senior year of high school, just before going off to university, or even her first year of university. Throughout the first movie, it was shown how May was able to use her friends to center and calm herself. Though they did come across a rough patch in their friendship when May was reluctant to speak up against her mother, it was Miriam, Abby, and Priya that helped May control her powers. During a time in a young adult's life, such as their senior year or going off to university, the group would be caught in a situation where all of these girls would be forging their own paths. It would be interesting to see if they could still remain close or if the sudden feeling of being left to deal with her powers alone would have any effect on May. There's a small chance that a film involving them in college might keep them relatively close-knit, following something more like Monsters University. In that instance, Mikey and Sully bonded in college and stayed close colleagues when following their careers. It's a slim chance, but May and her friends could have a similar setup with all of them using their own passions to help one another as they aged and gained a higher education. Of course, should a follow-up film be made, but focusing on May preparing for the opportunity of attending a university, there's also the chance that she would once again be faced with a choice. After all, the temple was something her family took great pride in, and something that May expressed to have great pride in, as she happily helped out with the tours and cleaning even after gaining more independence. It would make sense that May would instead choose to focus her energy on the temple rather than going off to university. That could lead to a story revolving around May getting used to the idea of being at home while her friends moved away to attend school. Or maybe another of the girls would go straight to work nearby, leaving at least one longtime friend for May to continue meeting with. Instead of a continuation, some fans thought there was potential for a prequel, such as learning more about Sun Yi. Hearing Sun Yi's story, it would be easy to play out what a film about her life would look like. We could see how Sun Yi became so fascinated with the Red Pandas and developed her spiritual ties to them. Being able to see for ourselves how Sun Yi first harnessed the power for herself and how she learned to control it would make for a great movie. Even if it wasn't given a full feature film, seeing as we essentially know how it ended, it would still make for a great addition to the story. There's also the possibility of a prequel involving Sun Yi to instead focus on her two daughters receiving the gift to transform, with their mother teaching them how to control the blessing. Of course, a magic power passed down generation to generation gives a perfect setup to introducing an old rivalry. Since the family received their gifts centuries beforehand, with Sun Yi able to channel her connection to the Red Panda into a power for herself, it only stands to reason that someone else would have a similar idea. Having groups of traveling bandits and armies that would look to pillage a vulnerable community would easily spread word about a woman that could transform into a mythical beast. Not only would word about this phenomenon spread, but it would have given others the idea to attempt their own transformations. Having a sequel that revealed an old rival in the family long since forgotten about, or just refused to speak about, believing them to be no longer a threat, would be an interesting story. We already know that the family grew to be ashamed of their blessing. As we pointed out on a previous list, there was a chance that being able to channel their emotions could help them control what size their red panda form came out as. It was seen with May that she was able to quickly switch her forms for agility and was the first in generations to be able to control which form she took. She'd been able to take down her mother's red panda, but would that same skill hold up against a rival force? After a few years, May would master her abilities more and more. By the time a rival would show, there could be a chance that May could channel a red panda that was closer in size to her mother's, as Sun Yi was said to have done. However, it would be possible that a rival family would insist on keeping up with the generational blessing, keeping up maintaining it without gaining unwanted attention. After all, had May been told ahead of time that she was going to eventually transform, she would likely have never been spotted on national television. What's happening to me? 
which leads up to how an enemy would find the family. Ming herself had said that she wasn't worried about covering up the story that the media released, as no one had any way of telling that it was Mei that was causing all the damage. Well, her own mother, Wu, had figured it out quickly, and an enemy would also be fast when connecting the dots, I would imagine. Of course, there would also be no guarantee that the enemy would be an entire family. The origin of Sun Yi's power established that she was able to connect with a higher divine being. The rival in question could always be another divine force that just didn't agree with Sun Yi's family being given the gift of the Red Panda from the start. Perhaps they resented when they saw the family repress the power on their own, only to come out of the woodwork when Mei openly flaunted the gift. This wouldn't be the first time a story of a divine being getting insulted and then lashing out would be released. As seen with Disney's Hercules in 1999, or DreamWorks' release of Sinbad, Legend of the Seven Seas in 2003, conflict between a mortal and a god or goddess can make for an intense plotline. Another speculated idea bouncing around with fans is, well, there could be a focus on May's extended family. Since we've already been introduced to May's aunts, it wouldn't be too outlandish to think we could get more content centering around them and their own children. The aunties made a bang, even with their limited screen time in the movie. Their power-up when they rushed to help Wu and Mei drag Ming into the circle won over a lot of fans. That alone makes them the perfect candidates to at least get some sort of short feature, even if a full movie couldn't be done. Seeing any cousins would have the potential for a full film or series, especially if those cousins were just young enough that we could see the aunties allowing their children to choose for themselves whether or not to keep their red panda. Seeing May harness her powers and control them as she had, no doubt left the aunties with a lot to consider when it came to how they viewed their curse. There would be a chance that at least one of them would encourage one of their own children to explore their powers and treat them as a gift rather than as a curse. No doubt that one or two of the aunties would be on the fence about such an idea, causing some conflict in the family. Or maybe Wu would be torn about the idea and insist on a bunch of precautions, making the situation more stressful than it would need to be. So no more panda. There would also be the chance that perhaps one of said cousins could be experiencing their shifting when the aunties are a little too busy dealing with Ming and Mei. Finally, we have our last theory on the list, Mei in adulthood. Sandra Oh had expressed some interest in seeing Mei officially becoming an adult should a sequel be released. She stated to Cinema Blend that she wouldn't have minded a story revolving around Mei being in college or perhaps tackling motherhood herself. Seeing Mei as a mother and seeing how she would help her own daughter or daughters deal with their transformations would make for a fitting follow-up to her story. With Mei being open about her powers, the feature could go one of two ways. One, Mei's daughter could grow up preparing for the gift and be looking forward to receiving it, only for something to go wrong. Perhaps her red panda form would be too big to handle. Maybe something like what happened to Mirabelle in Encanto would occur and she wouldn't be given a red panda. Or two, maybe being told about the pressure of the generational blessing would have a negative effect on Mei's daughter. Maybe she would be too overcome with the fear to be able to control the red panda at first. Or perhaps she would reject the gift completely, not wanting to be associated with her mother, the red panda that everyone in town knew about. On the plus side, we know with Mei being open about her powers would mean any story of her experiencing motherhood wouldn't just be a repeat of The Little Mermaid 2, where Ariel kept her past a secret from her own child until everything hit the fan. As much as we enjoy a Disney feature, it would be boring to see the same movie again and again and, and, and again with just the names changed. But let us know in the comments section if you agree with our list and tell us what we should cover next. Remember to hit that notification bell and binge more of our videos. But most importantly, stay wicked.